Let me show you a simple way to get started with Photoshop step by step. I want to show you two real life projects. The first one is going to be working with photos. Now with AI built into Photoshop, they made it a whole lot easier to edit photos. And the second one is going to be creating design. And I'm going to use it to create a YouTube thumbnail, but you could create anything that requires text, shapes, and images. And I've been using Photoshop for 15 years. So I'm going to make this a crash course to get you started from scratch. And at the end of the video, I have more resources if you want to dive deeper. Let's jump in. The very first thing you need is the latest version of Photoshop. Photoshop is not something you buy one time. It's a monthly subscription, but they typically have a free trial to the latest version on the Adobe website. So Adobe is the company that makes Photoshop's along with ton of different apps. So I'll put a link in the description to this page. Make sure you start with a free trial here if you don't have Photoshop already. Now, once you install and open up Photoshop, you'll land on this homepage here and you could skip the tutorial page that pops up. And right on the left side, you could start with a new file. I'm gonna show you this second because we're gonna use a blank file for design. But if you wanna work with an image, you could just press open and open that image and that will start your project. All your recent projects will show up over here. You shouldn't have any yet if this is your first project. So I'm going to press open a project and then you want to go ahead and choose an image here. So I have this image that I got from a website that I'll show you and I'm going to press open right over here. So if you want to follow along, there's this website called pixels.com and this website just has free images. So you could just go ahead and click on any of them or press download on any of them and then you could open it in Photoshop. So you could kind of follow along with the different tools and different techniques for retouching photos and altering photos. Okay, now we are inside of Photoshop. So let me quickly show you what you're looking at here. I won't go into details because I just want to show you these essentials here. But right here in the center, this is basically where your image is gonna pop up. If you're gonna create any kind of design, it's gonna happen right in the center. But on the left side, these are all the different tools that are gonna let us alter different images and create graphics right here. If yours is collapsed, if you press this little arrow, it will show you all the different tools. And I'll walk you through some of the essential ones here. If you don't see what I'm looking at here or the same layout, if you go to the window menu right on top, you could change your workspace to the essential workspace. This is the one by default, or just go ahead and set yours, reset yours right here. And then you'll see one that looks more like mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend out the different toolbar. And I'll show you the different tools as we go through the video. And on the right side over here, the most common place you'll look at is this thing called layers. So Photoshop is designed in layer format, meaning whatever is on top is going to show up as the very first thing on top. And then you could kind of layer things underneath it. That will make more sense when we create design right now with a photo. I only have one layer right now. OK, so let's go through photo editing, which is the most common way people use Photoshop. And I'll use some of the AI tools that pop up over here as well. The first thing is if you come over to the image menu right on top, so you have a bunch of different menus on top as well besides the tools on the left side. But if you go to adjustment, typically you'll want to fix up an image. So sometimes it's too dark, sometimes it's too bright, sometimes it's not vibrant enough. So these are gonna give you all those different options. So these four on top are for brightness and the easiest one to use is right here, brightness and contrast. So if an image is too dark, well, this way will make it more bright. If it's too bright, this way will make it darker. So this is a simple brightness slider. And sometimes contrast is useful. So sometimes you want more contrast. You see the darks are getting darker. Sometimes you wanna make it lighter. So this image actually looked good. So I'm not gonna change this, but this is a common way to get started with it. And then you could also press auto and that will just make some adjustments on its own here. It will analyze the image and it looks like it made some adjustments. It gave us a little more contrast and made it a little bit darker. Press okay there. Now under the image menu under adjustments, then you have the second option which has to do with color. So vibrance is my favorite one here where with vibrance, you could go ahead and take the vibrance up and it makes things really pop. You could see the skin tone is really popping. Saturation just adds color, but in a very unnatural way when it comes to skin tone. Sometimes for landscape and things like that, it works pretty well, or you could just do a subtle amount, but vibrance is one of my favorite ways to give some skin tone or a person here some more color. And under image tab, you also have auto options. So if you want auto color or auto contrast, let's try auto color here. You could see it took away a little bit of yellow here and I'll show you a before and after. So this was before 
And then if I go to edit and redo, redo auto color, this is what I got after. So those are the different fixes you typically start with when you're working with an image. Now, let me show you some of these tools over here. So with each of these, if you hover over them, it kind of tells you exactly what the tool does. And if you click on it and click and hold, you usually have multiple different options inside of each tool. So I'll click on this one. You can see you have a bunch of different tools inside of just this one tool. So this could get a little bit complicated, but typically you just use a handful of tools for the most part. And then each one has a little keyboard shortcut to it. So for Zoom, if you press Z on your keyboard, you just get that tool. And after a while, you get used to the more common keyboards that you'll use. So let me just use zoom right here and I'll just click in the center and I wanna zoom into her face and I wanna do some retouching here. So the one tool I wanna to show you here is for retouching skin. That's a very common way to use Photoshop. And that is over here, right here. It's called Spot Healing Brush, keyboard shortcut J. If you click it, it gives you this little brush. The red is just my mouse highlighter, but right, the black area is my brush. And if you look on top, every time you choose a tool, you'll get a tool menu on top for that specific tool. So you could go ahead and click over here. And this gives you all kinds of different settings for this brush that I have. So if you see the size right now, if I increase the size to, let's say, like 50, you see the black brush got much bigger. You could change the hardness. You could change the spacing. These are a little bit more advanced. But right now, let me go ahead and dial this down to like 25. We want a kind of a smaller brush. And if I really zoom in, I'm going to just zoom in a bunch more with that keyboard shortcut. And let's say I want to remove any type of imperfection here. I could just click and you see that just disappeared, right? So if I just click like right here, you see how that disappeared just with one click. So that's some of the power of Photoshop here where you could go ahead and retouch skin really quickly and smooth people out. Now, this gets a lot more advanced. This is one of the simplest tools to use, but the spot healing brush, very easy to remove any type of imperfection that you want to remove. Now, there's this other tool over here. This is called the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge tool. Let me show you the dodge tool over here. If you go ahead and select it, you could see it's making things a little bit wider. Okay, so maybe if you want to whiten someone's teeth, for example, this is a really easy way to do that, right? Just a dodge tool, and that looks a little bit better. Then you have the burn tool. Let's say a portion of her forehead is a little bit too bright. Well, you could use the burn tool here to make it a little bit darker. Now I went a little bit too far, but you get the idea here. So this could just help with a little bit of retouching with these different types of brushes. And then make sure you touch the brush size here, soften it, change the size. They have a bunch of different presets for the different type of brushes and they're all gonna have a different type of effect. So the burn tool in this case didn't make sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo what I did over here. And in your menu, by the way, if you press edit, undo and redo are just these. I'm just using the keyboard shortcut for them to do them quickly, but this is how you just go backwards multiple steps. Okay, let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Now let me show you how to cut her out of the background and AI has made this a whole lot easier than ever before. So all I have to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose the move tool over here, which is typically the tool you're going to be on all the time is the keyboard shortcut V. But if I press select subject right down here, this little menu just floats. So you could put this anywhere. But if you press select subject, it's going to select the subject and it's going to do a pretty good job compared to what was possible before. And then if I just press this option right here, this one, it says create mask from selection. If I select this, it just cut out the background entirely. So you could see now my layer looks a little bit different. It was the person's photo, but now it's created this nice mask for us. And we could do all kinds of different advanced adjustments here with that as well. Now she's on a transparent background. This checker background is actually transparent. So I could just move her out of this and put her on a different background. I'll show you that I'm going to use her and put her in a different background in the next project, which is when we're making our design. So let me go ahead and show you how to save a project when you're done with it. And then we'll move on to the second project. If you come over here to file, you could press save as right here. Now this is going to save your file as a .psd file. A .psd is not something you would post online or on your website, but this is a way to come back to this very specific project to make further edits. So that's the very first thing you want to do. Then you want to go to file and you want to go to export and you want to export as this option right here. 
And this lets you now save it for the web or for your social media right here. So you could choose format. Typically JPEG is what you want. If you want to keep the transparency that we have, you could then choose PNG. So you see this one has transparency checked on. But in this case, I just want the JPEG here with all the different adjustments I made. You could see the background is white. So save this where you want on your computer and name it something else. And I'm going to save it. And now it's saved to my computer as a JPEG that I could post anywhere. Okay, let's press the home icon and let's go to our second project. So this time, instead of pressing open and starting with a picture, I'm going to start with a blank canvas. I'm going to press new file over here. And with a new file, it's going to give you all kinds of different options on top, depending on what you're doing. So in this case, if I'm doing illustration, I could see all these different types of sizes. Film and video, I'm going to choose film and video because this one gives me an option, 1920 by 1080. That's a YouTube thumbnail size. So you could look up different width and height of whatever type of design you want to make and type those numbers here. You could just Google it and it will tell you what to do. And then everything else, I'm going to keep the same. So it's going to be a white background, 1920 by 1080 and 72 resolution is fine. I'm going to go ahead and press create. Okay, the very first thing I want to do is I want to add some text here. So with my YouTube thumbnails, a lot of times I have text and I have a picture of myself here on the other side. So I'll choose the text tool over here, which is this T option right here in your toolbar and then click anywhere over here. And then your top menu is going to change. So the first thing you want to do is you want to choose a font. So a ton of different fonts to choose from. Then you want to choose a font style. Again, some fonts are going to have all these different styles like bold and italic, your font size and your font color. In this case, I'm going to change the font color here to be something dark so I could see what's going on. Okay, sometimes it puts a placeholder text. I'm just going to press delete and type my own. So this is Photoshop tutorial for beginners. Okay, and then I'm going to press the check mark right here and we got ourselves text. I'm still on the text tool. So I'm going to go to the move tool over here, which is the first tool we have. And I'm going to move this here. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to do. Then I want to add a background color. This is not quite the right color. So lots of different ways to do that. But I want to show you this option. It shows you a couple of different tools this way. If you go to your layer panel, if you press the plus sign right over here, it's going to add a new layer. So you can see right on top, we got something called layer one. I'm going to replace this and I'm going to call this new background. Okay. And to add some color to it, I'll show you the shape tool over here. So these are the shape tools and you have a bunch of them, but the rectangle tool, if I select it, I could choose a color right here, the fill color on top. If I click it, it's going to give me all kinds of different options that I could choose. Right. And these all have different folders and things like that. And I could choose from them. So let me choose maybe this purple one and I could just grab from the corner here and just create a shape. So now I got myself a rectangular shape that was based on this fill color. I could change this anytime, by the way, it shows up on the right now on their appearance and I could choose kind of like different colors from over here. But let's say this was fine now. The text disappeared and that's when I was mentioning layers. So the top layer actually covers whatever is under it. So I need to grab this layer and put it under the text layer so the text layer could then appear. Now, in this case, I'm going to double click on the text layer and I'm going to change the color to white. So it's going to pop a little bit more than black now that we have a darker background. OK, then I want to give this a little bit of styling. So if you double click on the T, it lets you edit the text. But if you double click on the text over here, like in the corner, not the text itself, because that just lets you edit the text, but all the way at the end, it brings up this whole new menu. And there's a ton here. These are called layer styles. But the one I want to show you is this one called drop shadow. And look at the nice subtle background that it puts here to make this pop, this little drop shadow under the text. They also have this one called stroke, which creates these nice outlines around your text. So depending on your taste, you could choose one of these over here. Now let's go ahead and bring in our subject. So we're going to go to the other tab. So if you look on top, we have two different tabs. We actually have two Photoshop projects going at the same time. And you could take things from one project to the other one. So I'm going to grab her over here, this layer. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drop it on top of this other project by just hovering over here. And I'll bring it where I want and I'll drop her right over here. And if it's too big right here, this layer is too big. I need to come to edit over here and I need to come down here 
to transform and I need to change the scale. So choose scale. Let me just zoom out just to show you how big. So this image is much bigger than what I was building over here. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's much, much bigger. So I'll go ahead and shrink it down and I'll place her right over here. Okay, and press the check mark. And it's looking pretty good now. Now I would spend a lot more time on this. I would maybe give the text some different colors over here to see how it works across the background. But for the sake of time, let's say we're done. We're just gonna go to file. We're gonna go to export and we're gonna go to export as. So JPEG is your first option. You have PNG, but I almost always choose JPEG for this kind of thing for my website. It's a little bit of a smaller file. The quality is a simple slider. I usually leave it on six. And then the file size shows up here on the left side. For YouTube, this is good. It doesn't matter all that much, but sometimes for your website, you may want five. It's a little bit of a smaller file, but I'll choose six. Everything else is the same. It knows the files, the sizes and everything. Export, pick a place on your computer where you want to save this, give it a name, and that's it. Now it's on my computer and I could post it online from there. And I want to show you one more advanced AI option. So I'll go ahead and open up an image here from Pixels again. Now, this is one of their most advanced AI options. This is one of the biggest updates they've ever added to Photoshop in 30 years of Photoshop being around. So I'm going to come over here. There's a tool over here called the Lasso tool. The keyboard shortcut for it is L. Click it and then create a selection that connects back to itself. So I'm going to create a selection like this. And I'm going to close it up. OK, so this is our selection. And then you'll get this menu every time you create a selection like this. You could click generative fill and use a prompt here. So let's say I just want to see a boat over here and you could describe it as much as you want. But let's say I want a boat. I'm going to press generate and look at that. It created a boat and I got three different options over here under variation. So here's another boat. Well, this one looks pretty good. And if you look on the layers panel, it's created a layer. So the background is still there. And look how much change is created to make this work. So look at the trees in the background. Now with the boat, look at the trees now. It's completely changed. It's not just putting a boat here. It's making it completely match what's going on. It's even created these natural shadows. Look underneath it. Look at this. It's also based on the sun's direction, it's actually reflecting on the water. This is incredible. And if you like my teaching style, I do have a very comprehensive Photoshop course that's about 80 different tutorials, a little bit over five hours of content that walks you through step-by-step step from a complete beginner downloading Photoshop to becoming an advanced user and all the different things Photoshop has. And some of these I have as a trailer, so you see what's included in the course and there's a preview and a full outline of all the different lectures included. So I'll link this below in the description if you wanna take Photoshop to the next level. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.